I guess we all waited for that one. We finally start painting. The big task for this year is to get the hull fixed from the outside. We hope this could be achieved by good pressure wash and a little bit of paint. When we hauled out the boat, we discovered a very severe corrosion damage. So now we are facing a labor extensive, very expensive and extended time in the shipyard. Hello, it's so good to see you again. I'm Barbara and together with Daniel I restore this historic steel ship. This time we, well actually Jan from the shipyard, puts a new coating on Flying Coney's hull. So before we start into this video, let's take the time to introduce Jan. Even so, he's a bit younger than we are, Jan is already the big boss of this shipyard. And he's probably the calmest person I ever met. No matter how stressful it is, he stays relaxed and keeps going. He never put pressure on us to get the boat back into the water. Even so, the shipyard was completely booked out occasionally and they hadn't much work to do on our ship. And we are really thankful for that. Usually you find him pressure washing or painting a ship. Since he's the biggest lad around, he's actually the best one for those kind of jobs. While others need to climb ladders up and down, he simply walks around the ship with his spray gun in his hand, stretches a bit and even reaches the highest spots with ease. You already met him right at the beginning of our shipyard time when he pressure washed Flying Coney. What else? And now he's finally back for painting. I do my best. Thank you. As I've already mentioned, this video is about painting Flying Coney. But before we can actually cover her with a new topside color, we have to put on the primer and the new anti-fouling. And that's what this video is about. If you want to see her new topside color, you'll have to wait another week. So no need to skip to the end. But before we start into this video, I want to welcome all our new supporters on Patreon and PayPal. And an extra big thanks goes to all our officers. These crew members really keep the project going. Thank you so much for your support. And now, let's bring you up to date. So far, we ripped out all the interior from the saloon, underneath the aft cabin and in the forecastle, And removed a lot of dusty old cork insulation together with some frames. After that, the lads from the yard repaired the very big corrosion damage. And we called in an expert who discovered a very big hole. And while the shipyard was repairing this hole, we continued with massive destruction and removing a tank from hell. Eventually, we started de-rusting the waterline and preparing the hull for painting. While doing so, we found another big hole and got rid of it by simply removing an overplating and setting our boat on fire. Then we removed even more rust at the stern and to our very big surprise, the hull underneath it was in pristine condition. Finally, we finished this enormous task with a layer of two component primer. Ultimately, Flying Coney got a new commercially rated Seawolf and the class surveyor came one more time to inspect the hull and he made sure that the ship is safe for sailing. Well, I believe for the, for the Costco uh, we can say now uh, today it's good. So what's up next? We're done with the two component primer now and all anodes are taped off. So in theory we're ready for paint. The only step that's left is we have to tape off the waterline. We have absolutely no power left whatsoever. So we just want to push to go back into the water. And the problem is um, the weather at the moment is not in our favor. It's either windy or it's raining or third option, both. So we, we kind of have to push it, otherwise we're on the hard for one more month and we do not want to have that, so we're just painting. Fortunately, it's possible to spray the aluminium primer. It's a one component primer and we want to have the complete ship primed or the complete hull primed. And for that, the problem is that to find the waterline again. At the moment it's pretty easy to see, to have an idea where the waterline is, but when the whole hull is silver, it's kind of difficult to spot. So we tape off small stripes of, of tape at the spots where the waterline is still visible, so that makes it easier to find the waterline again. And after the, the ship is primed, we tape off the complete water line with a laser level.
just just try to, to yeah. get as close to the spot where I try as uh, high as possible. Yeah. If there is a little bit of painful if you see it does not matter that much. It's more like there is not much rust above it. Yeah. So we said okay, for the sake of time. Yeah, we just want to know how the ships look in. <laughs> yeah, it's more to try out the blue paint. Okay. What Daniel tried to say is, we only paint the hull and not the bulwark, the part that goes upwards from the deck. So there's no need for Jan to spray the primer higher up. So finally the moment has come. We are ready for painting. Today is the day and we can't wait to share it with you. So finally we started painting. We decided to go with a one component system, which is basically standard for those kind of ships. Without going too deep into the coating stuff, and believe me, you easily get lost in it, there are basically two options, one component and two component paint. As you could guess by the name, one consists only of one component, the paint, and simply hardens over time. The other one consists of two parts, the paint and the hardener and you have to mix them thoroughly before you start painting. Generally speaking, a two-component coating is more durable and looks better, but it is much more difficult to apply. And no, I don't mean the mixing part. I could handle that one. The tricky thing is the level of paint preparation you need and the much smaller weather window you get with the two-component system. They are really sensitive to moisture and temperature. So there was absolutely no option to apply them outdoors in November in the Netherlands. Therefore, we settled on the one component paint. During the time in the shipyard, we started to wonder if Flying Coney would ever be a beautiful ship again. All the structural repairs we had to do left their marks. The welding spots from the corrosion damage, the overplatings, the pittings, the rust. All that looked quite terrible. But everyone told us she is a steel ship. Wait until you have painted her, then she will shine again. And now after Jan painted the starboard side, I have to say they were right. Just the primer is on and Flying Coney already looks way better. All I want in this whole life, a little red house in a country wide, a picnic table out on the lawn, a couple of kids and a couple of dogs, work all day to half past five.
There are different options to actually get the paint on the boat. Each of them has their ups and downs. Typically you use a roller, a brush or a spray gun. Since most people don't have a powerful compressor and a spray gun laying around in the backyard, brushes and rollers it is for DIY. Rollers are faster, however with brushes you get a better finish. But we were not in DIY mode. We were in a professional shipyard. And in shipyards the most common way is to spray the paint. Mostly because it's really, really fast. It took Jan only an hour to put the primer on Flying Coney's entire hull. Meanwhile, our neighbor decided to paint the bottom of his ship on his own. And even though his ship is way smaller than Flying Coney, it took him a complete day. Since we already were completely done at this point, you might understand why we never ever considered anything but having Flying Coney spray painted. The tears fall down your precious face Vanished into the shadows of your own disgrace Forgive them, but they feel no shame If only they knew you held the golden flame The sweet sound of demons calling out Jan is done with the primer now, so we are waiting for the primer to dry and about in an hour or so we can start, or not we, Jan can start with putting the antifouling on. So originally we stated that we have planned to stay one week on the heart. Now that we are finally out of the water, let me tell you about our plans for the time in the shipyard. We plan to spend one busy week on the heart. And that's why when you spray on the paint, it's really quick. It's just the preparation until we got to this point that took months. So now we're finally getting closer to going back into the water and that's a great feeling. Jan just finished to spray the primer on Flying Coney's entire hull. The next step is to put on the new anti-fouling on the bottom. And Jan will spray that one as well. However, the spray gun always leaves a bit of a spray mist at the edges. So you either cover the entire ship in plastic or you paint the last centimeters with brushes and rollers. We decided to go with brushes and rollers. So the wonky line you will see is not our waterline. We will tape the waterline just before we roll on the anti-fouling to have a nice sharp edge. She thinks I'm a little lazy, I think she's a little crazy. We like summer and we like spring, watching wrestling in the rain. She ain't shy, she speaks her mind, tough as nails and smooth as wine. We burn hot as kerosene, baby, we got our own thing. She ain't skinny and I ain't tall, and that don't bother us at all. I run naked through the yard. She flash every police car, drinking wine and getting tired, and shooting out the damn street lights. How does she put up with me? Oh, baby, we got our own thing. Oh, we got our own thing. Oh, we don't need no rain. Oh, we ain't rich, but son of a bitch, we're a hillbilly king and queen. Life don't seem so hard with you beneath the stars. Cause we're growing four leaf clovers in the yard. 
We decided to paint the top coat with brushes and rollers because if you paint the upper 20 cm and the lower 20 cm, which is necessary for spray painting, there is not much left to spray. And that was quite some work. We had to find the waterline and we had to tape it twice. And we had to paint. So that will all be in the next video. And if you don't want to wait another week to see the finished result, you can head over to Patreon. We offer a one week free trial so you can have a look at Flying Coney's new color and enjoy all our benefits without paying anything. And if you like it, we would very much appreciate it if you become a crew member. I probably should mention that the silver stuff Jan sprayed on is not Flying Coney's new paint. We are not going to paint her silver. It's the primer. On steel ships the coating has many purposes. Since steel tends to rust, especially in humid, salty environments, in other words, at sea, the most important purpose is to prevent the steel from rusting away. If you never painted a boat before, you might wonder why we put so many different layers on. Well, let me explain. The first one, the one we put on after the terco, was a two-component zinc primer. It bounds good to the bare steel. Then Jan sprayed a layer of one component primer on the hull. It bounds good to the previous layers, avoids corrosion and helps the new paint to stay on. And now Jan sprays the antifouling, the red paint. It goes only on the underwater parts and it's a toxic paint that reduces marine growth on the hull. But over the years it wears off, so we have to renew it from time to time. And above the waterline, we will paint Flying Coney with a new one component top coat. But that's a story for another video. The anti-fouling is sprayed on and that's great because that means we are very close to going back into the water. The only remaining steps are to tape the water line and to paint with the anti-fouling down and to paint with the new color a little bit up. So the primer and the anti-fouling are on and I think Flying Coney looks really beautiful. But before we end this video, I want to share with you a very special launch. This small fishing vessel went into the water without a working engine. So they had to pull him off the cart and to the landing stage only with ropes, manpower and the help of two little dinghies. It was really interesting to watch. And we started to wonder what would happen if Flying Coney's engine wouldn't start. I mean, we do have a very reliable engine. We never had any starting problems. But how would we get Flying Coney off the cart if the engine doesn't start on launch day. You're free!
I can't believe that the whole transformation happened in just one day. Well, now it's done and next time we can finally put on the new top coat. And since you are still here, I guess that means you really enjoy our content. If you want to get more involved in this project, head over to Patreon for a free trial. There we do real-time updates, weekly chats and regular Q&As. There actually will be one this Saturday. So if you are quick, I'll see you there. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.